Hi everyone, thanks for checking in again. This is update number two for an extended heat wave in the middle of June. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. We're gonna talk about the hot temperatures already that have occurred and the expected heat wave continuing into the middle of the month or next weekend. Here are the highlights. Excessive heat for the deserts and mountains through Sunday. June 20th. Uh, for the valley areas, looks like it'll be at least through Saturday. There's high heat risk for the areas inland, which is impactful to a large population, even those who do prepare or are not vulnerable to the heat. Near record highs inland areas. Heat is one of the most deadly natural hazards in the United States. Increasingly warm overnight low temperatures. We're talking about temperatures 110 to 120 in the lower deserts. Still 10 to 20 degrees above average. Elevated fire risk. Potential for, if there's any starts, uh, aggressive growth vertically into the atmosphere. We also have record dry fuels and expanding drought conditions along with low humidity. We have introduced a chance for thunderstorms over our mountain areas and high deserts. Here's the current weather pattern. On the left-hand side is the low levels of the atmosphere. We see a low pressure circulation or a Catalina eddy forming because of the north winds along the coast, turning the corner into the California Bight. On the right-hand side, we have what's causing the heat wave, the upper level high pressure area coming in to the four corners area and holding tight. It's also producing Southerly flow, and that's what's been bringing the high clouds to our area, and it will bring some monsoonal moisture. This is what looked like at the satellite midday on June 16th. You can see the eddy created widespread coastal low clouds and a little bit deeper marine layer. Meanwhile, inland, it was clear with some occasional passing high clouds and even a few cumulus over the San Gregorio Mountains. How unusual is the current heat? Well, when we launched the weather balloon this morning, it was very unusual. And in fact, the observations showed temperatures warmer than ever recorded at about the elevation of 5,000 feet. And that's the level we measure the intensity of a heat wave and how warm that air mass is. You can see it was off the scale at that level. What did this result in? Well, in the deserts, it resulted in temperatures near 118 in the San Diego deserts. For our inland areas, it looks like temperatures were anywhere between 95 and 105. When you went west of I-15, look at the gradient. Temperatures dropped into the 80s. These are high temperatures and 70s along the beaches. So just in the San Diego area, between El Cajon around a 102 and downtown San Diego in the Bay Area in the upper 70s, a huge range in temperatures, which is common with this type of heat wave with the high pressure centered aloft to our east. Further north, here were the high temperatures on Tuesday, June 15th. A lot of locations in the Inland Empire, especially look across the Elsinore Convergence Zone. Furthest away from the marine layer, widespread temperatures 105 to 107. Coachella Valley temperatures topped out at least three locations around Palm Springs, 120. Further north, not much relief in the mountain areas of San Bernardino. Temperatures got up around 90, even at 6,500 feet elevation. The high deserts were widespread from Lancaster, Palmdale to Barstow, down to the Lucerne Valley, Apple Valley, between 104 and 109. We broke records on Tuesday. Here are the records that were set, including hot places like Palm Springs at 120, but even the Inland Empire 107 at San Jacinto, including Temperatures along some coastal communities like Anaheim and Chula Vista breaking records. And even mountain locations like Idlewild, 5,000 feet, 99 was a record high. We also saw across the west the hottest temperatures ever recorded at Salt Lake City Airport, 
tying their old record previously of 107. At Palm Springs, you can see this is the first time we've hit 120, probably not the last time, uh, even during this heat wave, but we reached 120 as shown here. Upper level high pressure is the blame, centered right over the Four Corners region, with an exiting storm actually going by to the north that produced rain across the Pacific Northwest. That'll be out of the picture over the next few days, and that'll allow high pressure to shift westward over Southern California. So done. In fact, the monsoon door will open up as that storm leaves. So on Thursday, we see a direct southerly flow or shift in wind, and that's the monsoon. So mid-level moisture first, high up along the mountain areas. So the main thunderstorm threat will be across the bigger, higher mountains, and then drifting into the high desert area. On Saturday, we see the thunderstorm threat go away, but we see upper level high pressure move right over Southern California. So continued heat over the weekend. There is the chance for thunderstorms, as mentioned, uh, mainly Thursday afternoon, possibly a couple on Friday, but mainly Thursday afternoon as shown here in the green shaded areas. The higher terrain will be what's needed to form those cumulus clouds to reach the instability because everything is based between 8,000 and 15,000 feet including the moisture. They will produce some rain, but there is a threat, of course, for lightning, and the rain areas could be rather limited in size. Relief. Relief is in store, fortunately. It looks like it'll begin on the coast on Sunday, but we'll have to wait till Monday for most areas like the mountains and all of the deserts. As a weak storm system presses along the California coast, as shown with a giant arrow here, and that'll deepen the marine layer, cause it to lift up, and also cause the atmosphere to cool down across the mountains and then eventually into the deserts as we go through the week. So temperatures falling back to near average or slightly above. The outlook as we go further, mid to late June calls for Temperatures heating up across the Pacific Northwest, as shown here. And our area remaining average to a little bit above average, but at least the peak and the core of the hottest temperatures have shifted north of us for the rest of the month. It's been really dry, and this is affecting some of our temperature extremes as well. We have places across our deserts that literally didn't see a winter, and they have precipitation totals less than 20% of where they should have received. Where can I find information about heat risk for my region? You can go to weather.gov San Diego under forecast and click on heat risk. Here are the heat risk maps. For example, on Friday, the red and purple widespread dangerous heat remaining over the mountains and deserts. Corresponding temperatures, a lot like what we saw on Tuesday, near 120 in the lower deserts, 105 to 110 upper deserts. Inland Empire, furthest away from that cooler marine air, temperatures up between 99 and 105. Doesn't go away over the weekend, as mentioned, Saturday's heat risk remains very high over mountains and deserts, so please keep that in mind for activities this weekend. And an elevated moderate heat risk in all areas of orange, which is basically the inland valleys. On Sunday, we start to see that relief I mentioned moving in from the coastal areas to our western valleys, but areas not feeling that sea breeze yet on Sunday will still be very hot as shown in the red and purple shaded areas. So much of our deserts and part of our desert slopes and mountains. Here are some of the numbers, what we expect during the rest of this heat wave as shown here. Take a look at your region. Dangerous temperatures over inland areas all the way through the weekend. To beat the heat, drink lots of fluid. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Dress in light clothing and light colored clothing and wear sunscreen, of course, but you need to be hydrated, lots of extra water. Always check on the pets and the elderly. Do not leave them in the car any time of the day. 
Relax when you can in a shady spot or if you're fortunate enough with air conditioning. Here are the highlights, excessive heat through the weekend. It looks like for our valley areas, at least through Saturday, but for our mountains and deserts through Sunday, near record hot temperatures. Ranging between 110 and 120 every day through Sunday in the deserts. Mountains, not much relief, so keep that in mind if you're hiking. You're gonna have to go above 7,000 feet to not be above 85 degrees in the mountains. Elevated fire risk, we also have a threat for thunderstorms, lightning, especially on Thursday. And we're talking about record dry fuels. Even if we do see a little bit of rain with these type of storms, uh, they will produce lightning that can cause fires and be dangerous. So keep that in mind. The bottom line is a heat wave through the weekend. Check weather.gov San Diego for the latest updates. And keep in mind that this is unusual, much above average temperatures and that the threat is continuing this week all the way through the weekend, especially for the far inland valleys, foothills, mountains, and of course our deserts with extreme dangerous heat in there. We're gonna see some fog along our coastal beaches and we're also gonna see some isolated thunderstorms, mainly on Thursday, maybe a couple on Saturday, Friday, sorry. The deeper marine layer, well, that will be finally coming to us as early as Sunday, but more prevalent as we get into next week, Monday and Tuesday. So some relief is in sight with this particular heat wave. Stay safe, stay cool, stay hydrated.